Today we begin the ALCS here in the Oakland Athletics franchise as we take on the Tampa Bay Rays. We have the teams with the two best records in the American League this year. Two 99 game winners going head to head for a spot in the World Series. The Dodgers and Giants play in the NLCS and already San Francisco's taken a one game advantage in that series. Despite playing in the same league, we don't know this Rays team all that well. We've only played three games this year, and those came in the first two weeks of the season. Now, we did win those games, or at least the series, two games to one. However, in that series, we did not face their pitcher they'll be using today, Shane McClanahan. It's ace versus ace, Michael versus McClanahan. It really doesn't get better than this. The Rays have a lot of really good pitching, and I'm expecting that to be a lot more challenging than our series against the Tigers. Our top three pitchers are all 86 overall or better, and Shane McClanahan already has a complete game shutout, and so does Shane Baz. So they were dominant in their last series against the Guardians. On top of that, they have a, a pretty good offense with Randy Arozarena, Josh Lowe. They did bring in Jazz Chisholm, who's been an absolute star with them. Gavin Sheets, David Richardson. They have Brandon Lowe, Curtis Mead, Harry Ford, Carson Williams. I think they have some really good defenders at spots where it really counts, like Williams at shortstop. And they've developed a few players like him, Ford, and Richardson to build up a team that has a shot at going to the World Series. Now, I'm really happy with how we began our playoff run, winning all three against Detroit and pretty much dominating this series. Our bullpen was lights out, not allowing a single run throughout this series. And we got two great starts when we needed them from two of our best pitchers. So now we take on a different caliber opponent, the second best team in the American League this year, the two seed Rays. Today's episode is going to be games one and two. Michael and Soroka will make the starts today, just like when we opened the Tigers series. Now, I did make one change. There was some feedback that I did like. I took Jackie Seacrest off of the active roster for the playoffs and added in Cole Phillips again. I don't want Cole Phillips to actually start any games. But say there is a game where a pitcher gets roughed up and you want somebody to come in from multiple innings, I think you've got to cover for that and not just rely on your best reliever to go and play in that role. I don't think that is ideal. If you're down 5 nothing early, to burn an arm like that isn't, isn't great. So Cole Phillips is there to play that role instead of Jackie Seacrest who didn't get into that first series. I Actually, I think he did pitch uh, one inning, but it was only because of a blowout scenario. And because we are taking on a lefty today, to start anyway, our lineup is a little bit different and you'll see what that means here shortly. But let's begin the American League Championship Series. Already 2-0 at home this year in the postseason. The A's take on the Rays. And this first game is just huge when you've got McClanahan versus Michael. And you can't expect that we're going to give up only four runs in a three-game span again. Our pitching was shut down against the Tigers, but I'm expecting this to be far more competitive. Well, this first game, I wouldn't be shocked if we have another pitcher's duel of very few runs scored. Joe Michael had a great postseason debut, going seven innings in a game where he wasn't even at his best. He only had five strikeouts in that game, which is a lot less than you would expect. We're underway against the Rays. Now... We used the same nine players, the same batting order in every game against the Tigers. We make a change here today in left field will not be Deshaun Knowles. It is Yusneel Cruz making his playoff starting debut. And that is because we're facing a pitcher that is very good. And we want to have a little extra power in there, I'd say. A Rosarena center field for Dawn. He makes the play. 
Deshaun Knowles was great in the first series, the ALDS. But I really wanted to have Cruz out there because a solo homer might be what decides a game like this. And as good as we saw Knowles play in that first game, he doesn't have a lot of power. He's good at getting on base, but today we're giving Cruz the chance, the number one prospect in baseball. Joe Michael facing Carson Williams, and it's right back to him on one hop. Two down. And Jazz Chisholm. I know he's got really good stats against righties, but not as good against lefties. Michael over the middle with a strike. 32 homers on the year for Jazz Chisholm. And he's been slugging over 500 now. Five of the last six years in the last four in a row. Some serious power off his bat. Two and one. That's down the line. Cruz has a look but won't get there. Michaels 2-2 is checked. Oh, wow, that's close. And a full count to the three-hitter of Tampa. In the air, and you Neil Cruz retreating, where he puts away the third out. Shane McClanahan, complete game shutout, eight strikeouts in the victory against the Guardians. And I'm expecting him to be, you know, tough. He's an elite pitcher. I think my main thing here is we got to find ways to have good at-bats. Do not give him quick outs on... Bad pitches. Only be aggressive when, you know, the time is right and the pitch is right. Can we manage our aggression to play this game the way we need to? On the ground and a slow roller to short as Vargas is retired. Then you go Arise, Vladdy, Fran Mill Reyes, Aaron Don in the five spot, but nowhere in this lineup will you see back-to-back -back lefties. By design, of course. Luis Arise. He kind of struggled this year against lefties. Good pitch to hit. Pulled into right field and dropped in. Base hit. And then we get Guerrero, who had a quiet ALDS. Just one hit. And with one gone, it's ball one low. Vladdy already in his 10th big league season. That's usually where pitchers try to attack him on the inside edge. Three and one as he misses outside. Would love to get some early runs against the ace of Tampa. Four fastballs to start the at-bat. Swung on the fifth one, fouled away. Got to give us something off speed here, I think. Just a piece of the curve. Got him on a curveball, and you just can't throw it a lot better than that. Fran Mill Reyes next with two gone. About the same spot. Now, in that last series, we also had an umpiring crew that had just an awful strike zone. Reyes hooks this one towards the palm trees. I got to get a feel for this umpire's zone after what we saw last series because that was brutal. Wow, another curveball. A couple hittable ones. Three curves to start the at bat. And another one off the glove at second base. Got him at second, though, and the first inning is over. Not surprised we end up with no runs across. I'm surprised they have Sheets hitting as high as he does, given his splits against lefties. But if he connects on one, he's got the power for some damage. In the air, Carlson drifting towards the gap. Settles in. I hope we got a big league strike zone, though. Like, what we dealt with in the last series was pretty ridiculous. So far, I haven't seen a, a bad call out of this umpire. Right by him. 
So David Richardson, one of those players they've drafted and developed throughout this franchise. That's a deep drive, headed toward the wall and left, but Cruz has room. Brandon Lau is the batter. Want to get some of these secondary pitches a bit better for him. We've been falling behind with uh, the off speed and using the fastball to get back into counts. Lau strikes out. Another zero for Joe Michael. Aaron Dunn had a grand slam in game one of the ALDS, but didn't really do a lot afterwards. McClanahan getting his curveball dialed in. 0-2 on Aaron. Ooh, I know that's not going to be popular. 0-2, I wanted to try putting that bunt down. It's strike three via bunt. And you sneal, Cruz will bat. Under the curveball that was left up. Want to go after those, but it's popped up. And one thing that did so well for us in the ALDS was the bottom of the order. When we had Vargas down there, Knowles and Carlson, they were all so good in that series. And now Soderstrom delivers a hit from the seventh spot. How about the play of this guy right here, Dylan Carlson, 444. On the first pitch, he's down the line, staying hot. And this one rattles off the wall, and we're going to have to turn back and not back in time. Can't have that here in the postseason. Bad base running blunder there. It does take guys a while to get back, so it's tough to take a hard turn and then really see what you got. Let's go top three now. Brock Jones. The curveball isn't quite right right now for Joe Michael. That was middle-middle. Popped up, long run, arise with a good run, we'll get there. Oh and two on Harry Ford. How about delivering one of those good curves low? That's too low. Held back, showing some discipline. Count is even, just high. Working out a walk is Harry Ford. So far, the strike zone has been by the book. Curtis Mead has uh, quite the stance here. This feels like the James Karinchak equivalent for a hitter. Just a lot of movement. Yeah, he's not giving them anything off the plate yet. Runner takes off, and Soderstrom threw it offline. Rays have a runner in scoring position. Base hit right field, and Carlson firing home. He's not in time. Oh, a bang-bang play, and he just got there ahead of the tag. I thought about hitting the cutoff here, because I thought, you know, no way, but... Carlson just late. Not anything he did wrong, just a little unlucky with the timing. One nothing raise on the board first. Two strikes on a Rose Arena, both borderline pitches. Chased it, strike three. This is also the first time we have actually trailed in the postseason. So now going to play from behind. Soderstrom a second chance. Money throw. Got him. Trey Sweeney had three or four doubles in the ALDS. We'll see here against the lefty how he does. Hitting ninth. He's just not great against lefties. Not a typical like guy you'd put in the nine spot, but I got eight guys I'd hit above him is all. 
Could argue here about swapping Carlson and Cruz's spot. Don't have to chase that. Because Carlson's hitting so well now, you don't have to hide him at the bottom of the order. McClanahan behind. Inside. Three and one. Takes ball four. I don't think that's a bad first trip through the order. We wasted a chance. Had a walk, a few hits. And now we got Miguel Vargas at the plate. I wanted that. Ooh, it's by him at 99. He and Joe Michael have similar fastballs. 0-2. 2 I. 3-2, it was low, and that is not getting calls. Just under the zone, not working. Out in front of it, strike three. Had us geared up for fastball velocity. A rise on the first pitch pops up center field. McClanahan turning this inning around quickly. In two pitches. But anytime you got a runner on here for our three and four hitters, you are you got a runner in scoring position here with Vladdy. I don't care if he's at first base. That's scoring position. Popped him up. That was the best pitch and swing we could have asked for there. Jazz puts down a bunt. He'll try to beat this out as Guerrero cannot make the play. I think he had time, but just overran it trying to go barehanded. So the speed of Chisholm aboard wastes no time in running, but it's fouled by Sheets. They've already attempted three stolen bases, or they've ran three times. We'll do a better job, hopefully, of holding runners here. And that's something we'll have to make note of now throughout the series as they want to run. Pitch out. Throw back to first. Sheet strikes out on the fastball in. Three and oh now to David Richardson. Everything missing away. We got a tight zone here to work with. Grounded on 3-0, and Guerrero finishes the inning. How about Fran Mil Reyes? We had a fair amount of homers back in the first series, but none by Guerrero or Reyes. Reyes hammers this one to the palm trees. Vargas had a couple. Carlson went yard. Aaron Don hit a home run. Am I forgetting one? After smoking that first pitch, of course, McClanahan misses the next two, trying to get some cute strikes. Back to challenge him. It's 2 2. Oh, got him with the backdoor curve. Hey, they're actually guarding against the bunt, it looks like, this time. They don't always play at the same depth over at third base, but when they play back, it's always on my mind with him. That was center cut. And that's four strikeouts for McClanahan. I'm sorry, five. And here's you, Sneal Cruz, 0 for 3 in the postseason. Swing at a lot of the early pitches with him. And Cruz sends it to left. Back and gone. Tie game on the rookie's first postseason homer. Not a bad time for me to hit my first home run with you, Sneal Cruz. 384 to left field, and we're tied at one. We've been getting pitches. I think that we're getting plenty to hit. 384 off the bat. I'm sure we'll hit some uh, a little bit further with him in due time. 
What an energizing way to finally get our first run in this one. We're top five, tie game. Everything is advertised so far, honestly. Wow, that's a low one that Lau swung at. One and two. Fouled off, and we won't get there. Pitch number 60. Strike three. Wrong edge, but right result. Four Ks for Joe Michael. His curveball's not as sharp as it's been. So I, I think we have to... Well, he's confident in it now. Maybe, maybe it was a slow start. That's more like it. You got two lefties here, two elite lefties that love their fastball curveball combo. You just couldn't get a more even matchup here in game one with these two 99 win teams. Strike three on Brock Jones. And our eyes will finish the inning. Great stuff from Joe Michael with a lot of gas in the tank. Dylan Carlson leads off the fifth inning, and he already doubled once. We put it to waste. But this guy's actually come to play in the postseason. I'm really happy with that. McClanahan, 52 pitches. I, I swung I, obviously too late. If you don't make your call right away, you're not getting there. Carlson does it again! Let's go into the wall. Extra bases for DC. Holy cow, he's gotten hot in the postseason. Doesn't matter if he struggled during the regular season. It's a fresh, clean slate. We're going to try to bunt him over now. That's a terrible bunt. Here is Miguel Vargas. Got one down the middle. McClanahan, just like Joe Michael, will attack you. It looks hittable, but then you look at yourself in the fifth inning, you got one run. Ah, ugly chasing that change. And the one-two. Fought it off. And the changeup puts him away. He's got a really good changeup, man. About 12 miles an hour he can take off of it, and clearly we are ahead of it. So Carlson left at second base for a rise. Sends it in the air, left field, but up in the air, it's caught. And we're through five. Curtis Mead has the only RBI hit for the race so far. Signed out of Australia. They developed some interesting batting stances in the land down under. 2-0. and oh, And he sends it down the line, hooking foul. Technically, wouldn't it be slicing foul? 2-2. Two and, two. and that's in the air for Cruz in left. Calling off Don. One gone. Randy looks at a strike in there. Towering, I think Cruz can get that. Running it down in foul territory. Let's go. Ooh, Soderstrom. Interesting, it didn't even camera cut. Oh boy, in on the hands, and Vargas is under that one. Michael cruising through the sixth. Vladimir Guerrero leads off. Ian Reyes have been very quiet. But these two can strike at any moment. If you make a good swing, which that wasn't. And Guerrero hits it into left field. Got one up, and somehow he got on top of that curveball. 
We'll take a hit. Not mad at that. We got six now off McClanahan. And here's Reyes. He's under this one, but he did not get nearly enough of it. One gone. Don hoping to avoid his strikeout this time. McClanahan is sitting at 67 pitches. Similar pace that Michael's on. So far, this pitcher's duel has been everything you expected. Two strikes on Aaron. Just off the plate, it does not get called. Under the fastball is Aaron Don for an easy out. And that brings up Yusniel Cruz. Biggest hit of his career was just a few innings ago. And Cruz tattoos one to left again, but this one's caught. So there is a chance we can make him a defensive sub late. But that would be more if we build up a lead and go into the, like, the ninth inning. But... Even if we can't get any base runners, he would be set to hit again in the ninth inning. And if this game is at all close, if we need that power, he's staying in. Seventh inning now for Joe Michael. Facing Jazz Chisholm. Two hits off of him thus far. They were all early. And he's got Jazz one and two. Got him! I just don't know if he's ever been more locked in than he's been the last couple innings. Curveball command has been found. Sheets held back. I'm impressed he caught up to that one. He was cheating a little bit there on the fastball, I think. Got way ahead of it. And it's tapped back to Michael. Nice play. Change up up there works too, I guess. 89th pitch from Joe Michael. Strike three looking on Richardson. Seven brilliant frames. And that's exactly what he gave us back in the first game of the ALDS. You'd love to give him a lead to work with. We should at the very least get somebody warming up in the bullpen. I don't know if they have any action. Oh, there we go. The answer is yes. Under this one and maybe a little late is Soderstrom. And that is the first out. Dylan Carlson is two for two with two doubles. What is he going to do now? Takes the first one. Right field this time. It got jammed, and it's not a double. McClanahan's pitch count in a great spot. Here's 80. Away for strike one. Ooh, good changeup. He doesn't throw his changeup a lot, but every time he throws it, it seems to get the uh, intended result. Three. Strike three on Sweeney, and we finish the seventh all tied at one. Michael does start the eighth inning. Six, seven, eight hitters due up for Tampa. Just money. Drops in the curve to Brandon Lau. He's fighting these off. Pitch count getting up closer to 100. Somehow he laid off that curve. And works the count full. Trying to get the leadoff man on. 
Michael, 3-2. He is just low to Lau. Hasn't missed much. And now the leadoff man is aboard. We now have Ashby and Jawan Duran getting warm. Michael has thrown 100 pitches and gets strike two on Jones. Michael, one, two, got him! Strike three, clipping the corner. And it's eight for Joe Michael. And now Harry Ford. How much more does Michael have in the tank? This was a regular occurrence during the regular season. But now it's the postseason. Two strikes. I think that was a little dramatic. Into center field and falls in front of Don. On his way to third and the Rays have a threat. First and third, one gone in the eighth. Just too much of the plate there. And that might be it. They got three righties coming up, and we're getting to Joan Duran a little early this time. If we got to close a game with somebody else, that's fine, but we're not even leading right now. This is Joan Duran's time here. Excellent outing for Joe Michael, but a couple base runners that he's responsible for. And now Duran facing Curtis Mead. 63 speed. Putting on the squeeze play. Wow. And we get the out at home. I guess it's a good thing we didn't throw a strike. A chance to make this a quick stint in the eighth inning. Strike three on Mead. And both teams have wasted a scoring opportunity. That one hurts. So Michael has been chased from this game in the eighth inning. And they already pull McClanahan. Johan Ramirez is the pitcher with a very high ERA and a 2.46 whip. And this is Miguel Vargas leading things off. And that's deep to left. He's done it again. Vargas delivers in the clutch. His third postseason homer. Unreal. Miguel Vargas nearly played himself off of this roster with how poorly the first couple years went. We decided to go back to the basics this year, start him as a bench player, worked him in against lefties. The confidence is all the way back, and he's not a role player anymore. Two to one, Oakland. Duran can stay in the game. Our eyes popped up into shallow center. Both of our runs have come on solo shots to left. Two to one, Oakland. The long ball's been a big part of our postseason ride so far. Ooh, I thought I had that one timed. It was early. And he's under the slider. Deep to left. Looking up. This is out of here. Guerrero's first homer of the postseason. And he put this one right in the first row. That had a lot of hang time. That was like a punt. 3-1 Oakland, a two-run cushion at least going into the ninth. I don't think he's hit many like that one. 
That one barely left. And they're already on to their third pitcher of the night. That was a short outing. Remember, he had a two and a half whip. Surprised uh, with those stats, he was first out of the bullpen. But Fran Mill Reyes now gets Ferguson. Dawn is guaranteed to hit now. Wow. I was really excited for that one. Ferguson looking to wrap things up. It's quickly 1-2 on Dawn, and he keeps it going. Ah, fastball up there, strike three. But we got two solos in that inning with Shane McClanahan getting taken out. Could Shane have gone further? Maybe. The Rays trusted a bullpen that... Gave up two solo shots, and now we're going to keep Joan Duran in there. Six pitches in, gave us a couple outs in the eighth. Hangs one to a Rosarena, but he looks at it. Randy grounded. Vargas scoops it at second. One down. Couple pitches here I don't like the locations of, but no aggressiveness out of the Rays hitters. They got their best hitters up, though, and they're going to get jazzed to the plate after this. Two strikes on Carson Williams. You know, Duran's got this fastball, but he's also got the big breaking ball off of it. And the difference in speed is nearly 20 miles per hour. That's just a lot of speed to try and... Dissect. Jazz Chisholm with the game on the line. That is a fair ball into the corner and left. Cruz flags it down. And Jazz is at second, bringing the tying run to the plate. It is Gavin Sheets. A 1-1 one, one count. Sheets grounds it. Guerrero across. Got him. And the Oakland A's take game one of the ALCS and are a perfect 4-0 to start postseason play. We got another gem from Joe Michael. And it was the solo homer offense that came through, giving us a 3-1 win. Miguel Vargas, one of the MVPs of our run so far. You knew with McClanahan and Michael, this would probably be a quick game with a lot of strikeouts, and that's exactly what it was. But we got just enough with the Rays offense struggling to produce. Joe Michael is your player of the game, and he had an outstanding day. We have won both of his outings here in the postseason. San Francisco is already up on the Dodgers two games to none. That is impressive. And I wanted to say that was a Dodgers home series, like they usually win the division and everything. Yeah, those games were in L.A. Close games, a 2-1 game here that the Giants won in a pitcher's duel. Great outing by Kyle Harrison. They beat Walker Bueller in that game. And then in the following, 7-5, a big six-run sixth inning. Jack Flaherty picks up the win. They got Felix Bautista. Tariq Skubal had trouble in that sixth, and that was too much. Brady House, a three-run homer, it looks like. So that's what's going on over in the National League. And now... We're going to have Soroka versus Bradley in game two. And we're on to game two of the American League Championship Series. Michael Soroka takes the mound for us in this one as we look to take a 2-0 series advantage and stay unbeaten in our own house. 
I have once again made a change for this game. Your starting left fielder this time around is going to be Miguel Cabrera, who will hit ninth. He has yet to appear in the postseason, but I wanted to get him some action. And this is going to give us 9-1-2, three really good on-base players as we try to do some damage against Taj Bradley and the Rays all over again. Excellent game one, but we're expected to win our home games, right? Got to take care of home field, and it's game two with a 3-0 start from Soroka and a four-pitch walk to a Rosarena. Just got to get him a strike to establish things. There's a fastball. Runner takes off, and it's on the ground. Just one play then to first for one out. Tampa has hit five homers in the postseason. I know we're more than that right now. How about the numbers for Jazz Chisholm? There's a good cutter in there. And the sinker finds the zone as the count moves to two and two. And Jazz giving us a tough battle here with Soroka now throwing 13 pitches in the inning. Off the plate with the slider and the counts full. With Gavin Sheets waiting for his chance. And it will come with runners at first and second. Soroka was excellent in our 2-1 victory against the Tigers. Getting into some trouble here early, but delivering a pinpoint pitch. So they have five homers as a team. Two from Jazz, two from Sheets. And two strikes now on Gavin Sheets. Tough change up there, Gavin battling. Wow, what a cutter, and he took it. Excellent pitch. That's hit deep to left, but it will twist foul. Cabrera running after it makes the catch. And no advance for Tampa. He had just enough speed to get under that one. And that brings up David Richardson. And a drive towards Don in center. He is back with just enough room. And it's a zero. A little nervous there in the first inning. And now we get Taj Bradley, who has a 6 ERA coming into this one after one start. And that's tapped by Aaron Don up the right side, and Bradley covers one away. So he must have gone six, giving up four. We got a rise hitting second, 313 average. Spinning the curveball low. He's a three pitch guy. Fastball, curveball, changeup, which is all I feel we saw against McClanahan anyway, so. Not too different, right? And a fly ball left field. Very playable. So here's Guerrero, who gave us a solo homer late in the first game. And that's going to right. It is a base hit with two down. Hey, we've had a good two-out rally sparked by him already in this uh, postseason. Now he will get into scoring position. Would take a well-placed hit to bring him home. But Bradley a little wild. And now Reyes. Base hit center field. Wave him home. Vladdy sprinting. Throw is not in time. Capitalizing with two down. We do it again. You go back to our series against the Tigers. That three-run first, was it in the, which game? The last game against them? Started off with a, a base hit, a walk. And then we had Sweeney, I think, with a big hit. Now Soderstrom, rocket to center field, and Reyes sprints around second base. The 2-0 rally, striking again. 
Good start. One, nothing. And waving at a fastball, strike one. How about our batting averages, though, down the lineup here? It just gets better. The Sweeney follows it back. 385 for him, 357 for Vargas, and 500 for Dylan Carlson. Bradley needing to end this inning. One, two, and got him. Curveball got us the chase. And we're hoping Soroka can work a lot quicker in the second. Oh, and two hole. Wow, goes around strike three. Curtis Mead delivered their only run scored last game with an RBI. We've now played four games in the postseason and have yet to allow a run from the bullpen. We've done outstanding there. One and one. And it's two strikes now. Almost. That's a dangerous pitch. If you can't control that, you'll hit some guys. Two and two, and he waves at a high change up. Strike there to start against Harry Ford. Definitely feels a little more locked in here. Definitely sharper. On the hands, good pitch. And we'll take that, strike three. We have spent such little time trailing in the postseason, as well as playing tie games. We have had a, a lot of leads for a long time. And here we call Miguel Vargas the tie breaker. He's done it a couple times already in the postseason. Coming up empty though. One and two. Out in front of it. It's a good change up to hit, but we can't touch any of those. Let's see if Carlson gets us back on track. They shift a bit over, and that's another swing and miss. That's five swings and misses in a row. Well, if you're only going to throw three pitches as a starter, you've got to have some that can miss bats. And Bradley's showing he's got that. Another swing and miss. We have not connected here in a little while. It's concerning. And Bradley's 2-2. Another swing and miss. Seven straight swings that haven't hit the ball? Well, how about Miguel Cabrera? This guy can reach base. Doesn't strike out all that often. And it's his first postseason A-B of the series. Hammered foul, but we hit the ball. Trying to come back. It's a 2-2 count from Bradley. Oh, man. And that is four strikeouts in a row for Taj Bradley. Top three, Soroka strikes out Carson Williams. And that took 40 pitches to go through the uh, order the first time. Now a Rosarena singles to center. Let's see if we can do a better job of holding these runners. He's extending his lead over there. And that's rolled up the middle. Sweeney to the bag. Double play. That was quick. Let's see, Aaron Don, he's only really had one standout moment here in the postseason. I think he's due for a hit. All-star Aaron, playoff grand slam Aaron. No alliteration there, and a line drive. That's caught in center. The wait for Aaron's second hit continues. Now a rise. He's hitting 294. He's just the most consistent player I've seen in this game. Now it's an 0-2 count. And in on the hands, looked at that a little too long. Just took a tad extra time to make sure it wasn't a slider, I guess. Or a curveball. But two outs now. 
There's a curve on the ground, and the third is ramped up rather quickly. Good pitch inside to Jazz. And he waits patiently for something worth swinging at. Finally going to give him a fastball, and it's hammered. Foul. Soroka's 3-2 is way inside on the cutter. Trying to get in on the hands there. And now it's Gavin Sheets. And again, got to watch out for speed. Whenever we let somebody reach here, it always ends up being one of their faster players. Two strikes on Gavin Sheets. Hung it. Line drive left center, and that's going to be trouble. Chaz will be waved around third, and he will score as the Rays tie things up on the Gavin Sheets double. Soroka didn't have great command in the first inning and has done mostly good since, but here, that one is just left up. And yeah, that wasn't even middle of the plate. It was up here. You're lucky it was just a double. That's the pitch we wanted to throw. So the Rays are on the board. David Richardson. And still nobody out. High fly left center. Don wants this one. And we'll see if they try to run. They will. Don's throw pulls away Guerrero. And Sheets is up 90 feet. So now you're trying to keep that run from scoring. Brandon Lau. Soroka's a hard guy to go and just say, all right, we got to strike this next guy out. Well, you bet we're going to try. Yeah, that wasn't where we wanted it either. That was middle of the plate. Let's try that cutter. And he nearly hit him, and I think Law was about to let that happen. Three and two. Curtis Mead on deck. Payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Excellent placement for the strikeout. And that brings up Curtis Mead. A two-out hit gave them a run back in game one. That's what he's looking to do here. He was the 2028 IL All-Star International League. I think that's AAA. Getting that late call up, maybe. Be careful with that one. And now the 2-2 two -two delivery. Fouled off. Missed. 3-2. Harry Ford on deck. Payoff pitch is taken away. Should probably get someone warm. Soroka, 68 pitches, and he's one of those guys where I feel good. The first, like, 85 or so. Good change. And he's under it. Strike two. Strike three on Ford. Still just the one allowed, but they created some opportunities that inning. And we'll see if we can go and grab the lead again quickly. We haven't been tied or trailing for much of the series or much of the postseason. Nope, and now it's Fran Reyes with a hitter's count. And that is belted towards right field. It's not going to be caught, but it stays in the yard. And Reyes has an extra base hit. Here we got Tyler Soderstrom. And that misses away. Right now, I'm really contemplating pulling Soroka. But the next couple batters favor a righty. That was a good pitch to hit. So I'm willing to maybe pitch him to two more batters. We'll see. Staying in this at bat. I got Haynes and Ashby getting warm right now. Bradley. 
One and two. No, man. Just can't lay off those low changes right now. Here is Trey Sweeney coming off an excellent ALDS. And away with the pitch. I think we've had a pretty good strike zone overall, and the consistency has been nice. Grounded in front of Reyes. Nothing doing there. So it's going to take Vargas. He has three RBIs. However, he's only driven in himself in this postseason with three solo homers. Maybe it's time to... Uh, Drive home somebody else. 2 and 0. Oh. And 3. You know the light's green. Carlson on deck. Not confident in much right now. And he finds the second strike. I'm sorry, that was strike one. 3 and 1. Popped him up. Right over the middle and just under it. On to the fifth. We will keep Soroka in to begin the inning. And I like the way it's starting. And he got him looking. Going to the sinker. Seven strikeouts on the night for Michael Soroka. And that turns over this lineup again. Third time through, a Rose Arena. And now missing 0-2 or 2-0. There's a strike. Got the count even on Randy. 81st pitch. Man, that was almost perfect. Josh Lowe on deck. Soroka with a sky for left. And that is Cabrera. Two down. And the lefty coming up. Josh Lowe. The splits are pretty serious on him. Jazz and Sheets. This is the time. Good outing again for Soroka, but we're going to go to our lefty to beat theirs. And we got Aaron Ashby now in the game. Up high, but a strike. The count is one and two. And that's way too high. Usually in these lefty-lefty at-bats, we end up going slider away. It did not go away, but it puts the batter away. And we go on to the bottom half of the fifth. You know, there's a lot of value in having a nasty lefty who can give you multiple innings out of the bullpen. Sure is nice. Dylan Carlson. And that's fouled away. Man, I got one plan in mind here. Oh, man. The way they're shifting, if you can put a bunt down up the third base line, it's a free single. I'd take a free single. Can you just give him something away? Let me try to hit that the other way. Oh, ugly. Bradley continues to get strikeouts here. This is, you know, he struck out a bunch against McClanahan, but I didn't think Bradley would do the same thing to us. But I guess I should swing better. That hits him. And we got a base runner. But here's a guy who just needs a get right at bat, hitting 105, more than due. Aaron Dunn. One playoff moment under his belt. Jam the left. And that is caught. Bradley at 63 pitches. He's just had a much better pace than Soroka. We haven't had like long at bats. We haven't fouled a bunch away. So he's. Going to have a chance to go further if he wants to. Ooh, that is actually a miss by the umpire. That was a good pitch. There goes your perfect score. Three and one. You got Guerrero on deck. You want to start filling the bases for our power hitters? 
Three and two. I'd rather have 3-2 anyway than 3-1. Get that runner on the move. Our eyes can hit anything. Except for that, apparently. I know that was early, but our eyes can usually get a piece anyway. Gotta tip your cap, I guess, to Taj Bradley. So we're playing the splits, of course, but sometimes superstars override splits. This is a big at-bat. Jazz rolls it over on one pitch. And we get him out. And Sheets on one pitch to Vargas. Another out. Ashby got the three lefties in just seven pitches. Now facing Richardson. Let's take a look at their lineup here the rest of the way. So you have your three lefties there, right up top. Then you start getting into the righties. And we're going to have to think about now how long Ashby stays in because he is a, a dominant pitcher. Pulling Soroka as early as we did, I'm certainly looking for more than three outs from him. We'll have to see those matchups. Richardson to right. He delivers. And that's going to be a two-out extra base hit. And he will finally get in there to second base. But here you go, lefty-lefty again. Four out of five batters. And that one is hittable. Hammered to right. Lefty-lefty. Brandon Lau leaves the building. Wow. So, again, we like our lefty-lefty matchups. They work so well earlier. Until this one changes the game. The Rays lead by two. And that one, again, if it's a lefty, I want all of them out here. And he missed up and in. I think that's going to probably be it then. We got righties coming up. And I'm going to bring in Kendrick Haynes. We still have two more lefties. However... Their lefties are really good players, and our lefty pitchers now are really inexperienced. So those could be some interesting at-bats. But Kendrick Haynes has done a pretty good job as that third or, like, second reliever. And he's by Curtis Mead. Man, you get the first two outs on two pitches... And now a drive from Curtis Mead. Cabrera watching as that flies way out of here. Second homer of the inning, and the Rays take a 4-1 lead. This just adds on to it. Two outs on two pitches. And now look where the inning has gone. And that, too, was a slider that just did not get to the edge or drift off the plate. Harry Ford's the batter. His third out, man, is awful elusive. Nearly hitting him. A 4-1 game out of nowhere. That's going to bloop in for a hit. Just trying to finish this inning. It won't end. Out in front. Carson wanted to do what's already been done twice in this inning. And that's lifted. Vargas is under it. And we got some work to do. But we got the right guys up. Guerrero, Reyes, and Soderstrom do up. Bradley still in the game as that's chopped over the mound slowly. And Guerrero is out. Almost anybody else on the team could have beaten that out. Franmil Reyes. A single and a double already. With one away. That's in there. So Bradley is now 71 pitches in. Little low on energy, but pretty high on confidence. How can't you be? Chopped it, and that is going to be playable as Bradley takes care of it. 
And our power bats have come in and barely made contact. Quickly two down. That was a borderline pitch. It wasn't like middle of the plate or anything. That was a better one to swing at. I think we're definitely itching to get into this bullpen. But you kind of have to earn it. We haven't done that yet. Can't let this be just a quick sixth inning, man. And he swings through a changeup, and it's another Bradley strikeout. Just four hits on the day for Oakland. What an outing for Taj Bradley. Bringing his A game here. So now we got Randy Arozarena. And I really want to, I want to bring in Uribe. We're going to warm him up for low and beyond. So I want Haynes to get us past De Rosarena. And I think, you know, down by three here, playing Uribe isn't the worst idea either. Although it doesn't really matter. We have a travel day. Everybody's going to be fresh for game three. But I'd sure like to see how he plays against some of these lefties. If we can use him more down the stretch. Big cut. I think Griggs is solid, but for sure Uribe's ceiling is much higher. Two and two. Missing high. We would like to avoid the leadoff walk. Payoff pitch. Come on. Not the sharpest outing here for Kendrick Haynes. We're also going to warm up Hernandez. But here comes Gregorio Uribe and his postseason debut. He's only pitched seven and two-third innings in the regular season. Pretty good innings, though. He allowed just one run. And now with the next four or five being lefties, this is his moment. Runner goes on the first pitch, and that's an easy steal. Getting way too much of a lead there. Got him at second. Uribe picks him off. That's one way to get your first out. Heck of a time, man. I don't think in my life I've ever picked somebody off in a baseball game. Mostly because I don't try. Lately, though, I've been trying a little bit. That's by him. Let's lock in now. Can a defensive play boost this team's morale? Crowd is into it. Check. His swing. Uribe's 3 2 delivery. Strike three. And now Jazz Chisholm. That's high, but delivered for a strike. Right on the money. Uribe, the former first round pick. Off the plate. We got four first round picks that we've drafted here on this 26 man roster. And that's going to be a free base for Jazz Chisholm. Extending the inning now. Good pitch to Gavin Sheets. And that one is on the ground. Guerrero to first. Still down three. I feel good here. If we can get a run, we're facing Johan Ramirez. Two and oh to Trey Sweeney. So next inning, I think we're looking at probably getting Hernandez in there. Probably, you know, split-wise, it doesn't make a huge difference what we do here, but I'm not going to go ask Uribe to go get more than three outs in his debut. 2-0. and oh. And a piece of a sinker that we should be letting go there. 
That was one to turn on, and we did so too early. Ooh, that nearly hits him. You gotta stand in there and take that one. Three and two to Trey Sweeney. And the crowd has something to cheer about. Miguel Vargas will hit. Used to pull him against righties. Now we let him swing. Inside. Good slider. We're out in front of way too many pitches today. That's grounded towards second base, and it's out of reach. A base hit. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back, go back. Everybody's safe. Don't panic. We got to be cool, calm, and collected. Wow. I am. A walk, a single, and now Dylan Carlson. Fouled back the first pitch. I know I can't make the substitution until he's uh, actually at bat. But we're going to make a move following this A-B. Carlson. Hammered. Deep right center. That one is down at the warning track. And we're going to have second and third with nobody out. Dylan Carlson. Double Dylan Carlson does it again. How many doubles is that in the postseason? As much as I like Miguel Cabrera, this is just not the opportunity that I want him in there for. Yusniel Cruz is entering the game. Two run game. Nobody out. Fouled back a fastball. We were ready for that one right on it. Inside on the sinker. And that one misses as well. He's having trouble throwing strikes that we aren't crushing. Something's got to give. And that's into right field. It is caught. And now one down. Lineup turns over. What better chance? Ooh, they're going to bring in a lefty. What better chance for Aaron Dunn to get on track again than with two on here? Caleb Ferguson. That's the fastball for strike one. Big breaking ball, and it's untouchable. No, strike three. Second and third, nobody out, and we go pop out, strike out. We still got to rise. We can't afford many more strikeouts. Center field. That one is slicing, but Jazz gets there. We only get the one. There was a lot of meat on that bone. We got to get two more still. That hurts to miss that opportunity. Jonathan Hernandez was unreal the last time we saw him. But it's a new day. Grounded and past the diving tray, Sweeney. So here's the lefty, Brandon Lau. Biggest hit of the game. And now a routine double play ball. There's two. Going around is Curtis Mead, who also launched a homer. He goes down swinging. Let's get back to the offense. Let's see if they leave the lefty in there. They do not. So another arm in there for the Rays. They go right-hander this time. John Almanzar. Guerrero and Reyes combined for three hits on the day. 
up the first or third base line and a one pitch ground out on Guerrero. Reyes, a single, a double, and then a ground out. The 2 1. That is into right field and it's going to reach the wall. Reyes will be held to a single. Beat the shift on that swing. And here in that spot, you've got to run for him. And we're going to run with Samad Taylor. Can we get that third run? He's a threat to steal. But I don't know if we'll do it right now. Tyler Soderstrom led the team in homers this year. And they're already thinking about the speed of Taylor. On the ground. Double play, inning over. On a good pitch to hit. On to the ninth we go. That is brutal. We got Hernandez in there. We're going to have to get Palante up. But given the pitch count of Hernandez, I'm okay with him continuing. I'm also going to get Griggs up just in case it's not a 1-2-3 inning. Then we can have a lefty-lefty matchup. Lucky on that one. It's just an out. Big cut there. Two strikes on Carson Williams. And then he waves at strike three. A Rose Arena. Another hack. Missing it. Two strikes as he fouls that off. And that's popped up. Hernandez does a fantastic job. And now we got to get two runs. Bottom of the ninth. Sweeney Vargas and Carlson coming up. As we look to take a 2-0 series lead. But we have work to do against Tanner Houck. One for one on postseason saves this year. Let's see his regular season numbers. 50 saves and two blown. First time he's been the closer of the Rays. And these numbers are unreal. Now, they only give him a 1.1 war, not thinking this is all that valuable. It seems pretty valuable to me. Here we go. Can you get a base runner and hope for the best? Hauk. Right over the middle. Grounded to short. Sweeney retired. That's going to bring up Miguel Vargas. One for three on the day. Yeah, big cut there. Just haven't swung. I've swung at some of the wrong pitches and let some of the right pitches go. That was the right pitch to swing at and just got a little piece of it. Already 0-2 on Vargas. Out in front. Hauk working quick. He wants to catch that flight. And now we're down to our last out of the game. Dylan Carlson. You sneal Cruz on deck. Hauk ahead of him. Doubled earlier. He's been doubling all postseason. And now hammers one that is turning foul. You can tell, though, that swing is more dangerous than it's been all year. Nope. Just low. Just keeping the at-bat alive, man. Not easy. I mean, look how good Hauk's pitching. In the air. Center field, Jazz on a run. He will run it down as the Rays take game two. We have lost our first postseason game, lost our first game at home in the postseason, 
And now they have stolen home field advantage as the series moves to Tampa. Another good game, but we just missed our best opportunity to equal what they did back in the sixth. You're not going to have opportunities all day. We missed a critical one and just couldn't get any big swings to bail us out. Far too many strikeouts. Like, we had the game I was worried we'd have against McClanahan, where I felt we were just much better. I felt like there were a lot of good swings in this game that just didn't get results, and there's not much you can do about that. But we had chances. And if we have better at-bats with runners in scoring position, then it's a different story. Tanner Houck saves it. Taj Bradley was excellent. We're doing good once we get to team's bullpens, but we needed more today. We also had our bullpen give up their first runs of the postseason. The Aaron Ashby home run allowed was really unexpected. And then Haynes gave one up as well. We have split the first two, again playing low scoring postseason games. And we're going to have to win at least one of these if we want to return home this postseason. Three games in Tampa follow. Meanwhile, the Dodgers have gotten their first win against the Giants. But we will have, in Game 3, I think we're going to pitch Ken Waldachuk over Logan Gilbert in this one. Waldachuk hasn't gotten a chance yet to pitch this postseason. And I think we've done a really good job with our lefties. I feel comfortable attacking their batters with left-handed pitching. And given, you know, their heart of the order, that four or five stretch all being lefties, we're definitely using Waldachuk in this one. Next episode will be games three and four. As we look where this series goes next. Tied at one, we could be in for a good one. Here's your update on postseason stats. As Dylan Carlson leads us in hits, he has seven. And of those seven, three have been doubles. It feels like it's been more, but he's also had a, a home run in there. We have seven homers in the postseason, three from Miguel Vargas. Honestly, a lot of our home runs are just kind of unexpected ones. RBIs, Trey Sweeney and Aaron Don each have four. No stolen bases yet. And I'm looking to see Aaron Don break out of this little slump here. He's 2 for 21. We know he's a lot better than that. For on base, we could probably be walking a little bit more. Be a little more patient. Michael and Soroka each have 13 strikeouts. And Soroka's done it in four less innings with a lower ERA. Soroka's been good, and so has Michael. I am really happy with how those two have pitched. Hernandez, 4.2, scoreless innings so far, but Ashby, now he's got some runs allowed. duran has been really good, and there might come a time where we have to use him again in a situation that is not a save situation. Kendrick Haynes, one in the third. He's had short outings by design, and the last one didn't go great. Uribe, I was impressed. I would definitely like to see him more in lefty-lefty situations. And then Waldachuk, Phillips, Palante. Those guys haven't gotten any action yet. And we haven't seen Susak or Muncy play. And the only reason you'd see Susak is because of injury, honestly. I think in game three, Shane Baz. This is probably going to be your lineup again. Deshaun Knowles will get a start. And we're going to bump up Carlson because of how good he's been. Is there any thought to dropping Don? No, not at all. But that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. It's going to be a really good fight here against the Rays. I'll be back with games three and four soon. Y'all take care. And please leave a like if you're enjoying the series. Subscribe to the channel. Postseason baseball continues next time. Have a great day.